Hello everyone, in this week's After Effects scripting tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at creating a layer or item type selector script. With this script, we'll be able to select any items in our project panel based on different types like videos, images, or custom ones you can put in yourself. Or if you're in a composition, you can select any footage, image, or camera layers. So just to see how this works, you can see in this project here, I have one image and a bunch of footage inside of my project. So if I select an image and I want to select it, it goes through and just selects our image. Now, if we want to go through and only select the videos, we can click on video and it's going to go through and select all of our videos. And in this case, comp, because I didn't filter it very thoroughly. And then over on the layer side, we can select all of the footage layers. You can see it selects it there. We can select the images or we can select all the cameras. So today this script is going to help you just select any layer types you need. Say you have a large stack of layers and you need a specific type with a specific name or layer style, then we can go through and click on one button to select everything rather than having to go through and click on each individual layer. The script is going to be fairly simple, just under probably about 80 or 70 lines of code, and most of it's kind of repetitive. So let's go ahead and get started by opening a new JavaScript file, and we're going to start by making this user interface. We'll have it over here for reference. We basically need a box, and it looks like two rows, one for the items and one for the layers. So we can start by making a variable called main window, which is going to be equal to a new window, and it's going to be a palette type window. The name is going to be layer slash item selector, and it's going to have an undefined size. After that, I'm going to grab my main window and take the orientation and set it to column. So all of the groups I put within it, the item group, then the layer group is going to go from top to bottom. So we'll go ahead and create those two groups. I'll just say group one is equal to uh, our main window, and we're going to add a group. And the name of the group is going to be group one. And since everything in this first group is going to go from left to right, we want the orientation to be set to row. So I'll grab group one and set the orientation to row. And then we can go ahead and create the elements that are going to be inside this first group. So we have a uh, little text saying item. We have a drop down with our options and a select button. So let's create um, just a regular line called group one. We're going to add some static text. We don't need to make a variable for it unless we want to do something like change its value or change the size, but I'm just going to keep it the default size of everything and it doesn't need a variable. So I'm just going to add some static text that says item. And then we need a drop down. So what we'll do is say var item dd for item drop down is going to be equal to our group one. And we're going to add a drop down list with undefined size and the values we're going to have in here, we're going to be able to search for videos. And we're also going to be able to search for images. And then to set the default selection so that it is selecting whatever we want, we'll set the item DD selection equal to zero. So it will start by selecting the video. Then we just need a select button. So we'll say item button is equal to group one. And we're going to add a button, undefined size, and have the text say select. So now if we go ahead and grab our main window and center it, and then we grab our main window again and show it. What we can do is run it now and you can see we have our first group set up. So all we need to do really is just duplicate this whole bit of code here. You can copy and paste it or you can actually hit control D uh, when you have it all selected. And then we can go ahead and change everything in here. What I'm gonna do is select everything, hit control F and make sure I'm in the find and replace window. I'm gonna make sure I have it set to search in my current selection. So inside of the current text I've selected, I want to take anything that says one and change it to two. I'm going to click on replace and it's going to make those changes, changing all these group ones to group twos. And then for all the times it says item, I also want it to say layer. And now that should be good. Let's double check that everything looks good here. I'm just going to capitalize this text so it says layer. And... Everything looks good. Let's check it out. You can see just like that with a couple of extra seconds and some shortcuts, we duplicated this entire thing and made another layer. So the only difference in this layer dropdown is that we need to have some different options. We'll say footage, we'll also have one for images, and then we'll have a third one like before for cameras. And then the dropdown selection is gonna be set to images and that should be good. So now we have our UI set up 
All that's left to do is add some code that says, hey, if they have video selected or image, select those, etc. If they have footage or images selected, select those. So what we're gonna do now is take our two buttons. We have one called the item button, and we have one called the layer button. Pretty self-explanatory. And for each of these, we're gonna add an onClick function. So we'll say onClick equals a function, and I'll paste this as well for the layer button. And now when we hit the layer button, what do we want to do? And we hit the item button, what do we want to do? So if we think through here, when we hit select next to the item button, well, the first thing we need to check is, do they have the video or images selected? So what we need to actually do before we can select any layers, if you think about it, let's say they open up a composition and have a bunch of layers selected. And then they go in and say, okay, let's select, let's select the videos in this. They click on select and it selects all the videos plus all of these pre-selected layers or items. What we need to do first is deselect everything so that it starts with the clean slate. The clean slate. And then we can select any of the specific items. So what I'm gonna do, uh, the first thing we're gonna do when we hit the item button is deselect the items. So I'm gonna create a function called deselect items. There's no uh, variables we need to bring into it because we're simply going to rush through all of these items over here and on each one we're gonna say deselect it. So what we're gonna do, we'll define our deselect items function. So say function deselect items. And this is going to be very simple. We're gonna run a single for loop from var i is equal to one, the very beginning of the number of items, and i is less than or equal to app.project.numItems. We're gonna increment i by one each time. So we're gonna start at item one, two, three, four, five. And each one we hit, we're gonna say deselect. And to do that, we're gonna say app.project.itemi, the current item it's taking a look at, dot selected is equal to false. That's as simple as it is. And in fact, we're gonna do the same thing for our layer button here. If you think about it, uh, we have possibly the chance of having layers already selected, and we wanna make sure they're deselected before we go in and make our detailed selection. So just like with our deselect items, inside of our layer button click, we're gonna start with deselect layers. Now with this one, we're actually gonna to wanna to bring in a composition and we're gonna say app.project.activeItem, which is going to make the assumption that they have a composition selected. If they don't though, we should have a check for them. So we're gonna say if app.project.activeItem is equal to null, or if app.project.activeItem is not an instance of a comp item. If that's the case, then we're gonna tell the user, please select the composition and then return false to exit this bit of code and they won't get to deselect their layers. All right, so now we're, we're checking if there's a composition selected. Let's go ahead and double check that these work. So I'm gonna select a bunch of items, run the script and click on select. And as you can see, it went through and deselected everything just as we need. So we're also going to need to do the same thing for deselect layers. I'm going to copy and paste this whole function just like before and just change up a few things. We're gonna change items to layers, and instead of uh, having no variables, we are bringing in one called a comp. We're gonna go through the comp dot num layers, and then for each layer, comp dot layer i dot selected is gonna equal false. That was pretty quick, but uh, it's pretty much the same thing. We're just replacing the project with the composition and referring to the layers instead of the items. So if we have some layers selected in our composition, or if we deselect a composition, it's gonna tell us, please select a composition. So if we select a composition, we're now going to deselect all of our layers. All right, and now we have two more functions to write, and that's gonna do it. So like we have a deselect items function, we're now gonna create one called select items. And we're gonna go into this with our value for our dropdown. So we're gonna grab our item dropdown. We're gonna grab the selection.index. This will give us an integer from zero to however many items there are, in this case one, zero or one for video or image, depending on which the user has selected. And we're gonna tell this function, if it's a zero, we know they wanna select the video, and if it's a one, we know they wanna select the images. So down below here, let's go ahead and create our function called select items. And we're gonna have just a variable called num or number. 
And inside of here, what we're gonna do is loop through all of the items again. So we're gonna say var i is equal to one, i is less than or equal to our app.project.num items, i plus plus to increment by one. And now we need to check what our num is. So if our num is equal to zero, we know that they're gonna to wanna to select an image. And if it's gonna be equal to one, or sorry, we know if it's gonna be equal to one, it's gonna be an image, and if it's equal to zero, it's gonna be a video. Each time we go through here, if num is equal to zero, it's not gonna change, we're just telling it. If it's zero, uh, this is the video case. So we're gonna say if app.project.itemi, and now we're gonna start checking whether or not this is the item we want. So since we're trying to check, is this a video? We're gonna put in some information in here to check whether or not it's a video itself. The easiest way to do this is there's two ways basically. The first way is to grab the item and we're gonna grab the duration. If the duration is greater than zero seconds, it's definitely a video because videos aren't zero seconds, only images can be and uh, other layer types like null objects or solids. So if the duration is greater than zero, definitely a video, but audio could be more than zero seconds too. So we need to also have a second case that says app.project.itemi.hasvideo. So this will basically tell it if it's longer than zero seconds and it has video, let's assume it's a video. Um, this could include compositions as well. So if you want, you can put in more cases to avoid that, but I'm okay with this in this case. So if the duration is greater than zero and it has video, what do we want to do? We simply want to select the layer for the item. So I'll say app.project.itemi.selected is equal to true. And that's it. Now we can move on to searching for photos. I'm going to copy and paste this bit of code here and just we're gonna change the uh, check here. As I said, if it's zero seconds, the duration, uh, it can definitely be an image. So instead of greater than zero, we'll say if it's equal to zero. And if it has video, well images definitely have video. So to check for an image, we're checking the duration. If it's zero, it's probably an image. And if it has video, it's also probably an image. There's one more thing we could check because we have a lot of these solids and what do solids have? A duration of zero and video. So they're also going to show up all of these solids here and I just want the images. So the last thing we'll check is if app.project.itemi.file is not equal to null. This is basically saying if this uh, supposed image doesn't have a file source, then it's not an image. So when we go up to this actual image here, it has a location on my hard drive. It knows there's a file. But if it's looking at this, uh, this solid here, there's no file source and thus it's not an image. All right, so let's take a look and see if our image selector is working. Let's first try and select some video. You can see it's gone through, selected the compositions as well as our video files. So now let's try a switch it to image and we're going to get our single image we have imported here. Awesome. So now you kind of get the gist of how it's gonna work. We have one more function to write, and that is to select our layers. So right below our deselect layers, we're going to write a function called select layers. And again, we're going to bring in our composition. And just like before, we need to bring in the dropdown index. So I'm going to just copy and paste this and change it from item DD because we're now dealing with our layers to layer DD dot selection dot index. And then we'll define our function down here called select layers with our composition as well as our num or number. And now we're going to loop through our composition. I is equal to one, I is less than or equal to our comp dot num layers, increment I by one. And then we have three cases this time. So actually let's switch it up from what I originally wrote. I'm gonna use a switch statement rather than three if statements. So again, we're dealing with footage, images, or cameras to select in the layer dropdown. So we're gonna have three different options. The switch we're looking for is what does our num equal? In the case that it's zero, we wanna do something. In the case that it's one, we wanna do something and break, and two. So we're gonna have, what is it, video or footage, images and camera. So we're pretty much gonna put an if statement in each of these. And then if whatever that case is true, we're gonna grab our composition dot layer I, and we're gonna say selected equals true. So we'll go ahead and copy and paste this for each of our three cases and fill in the ifs with the cases to make them proper. 
The way we're going to detect uh, whether or not these are the actual layer types we need is very similar to how we did it in the select items panel, except instead of referring to app.project.item, we're going to say layer.source. Because when you grab, say, this image layer here and refer to the source, it's going to take you back to the actual project item. So in the first case, we're looking for footage. Let's actually write a couple comments so we don't forget, just in case. So we're looking for footage. What are we going to check for? If comp.layer.i.source.duration is greater than zero. So again, we had this one before, but now we're just referring to the source. And comp.layer.i.source has video is equal to true. And I suppose we could put uh, has video equals true as well up here. I forgot to put the actual Boolean. So if the duration is greater than zero and it has video equals true, that's probably definitely gonna be a footage layer. For images, we can copy and paste this code again. If the duration is equal to zero, and again, we're gonna wanna check that the source file uh, is not null to make sure we don't grab any solids or nulls or whatever. So the last thing we'll say is comp.layer.i.source.file is not equal null. And you want to make sure you're not forgetting to grab the source because uh, you can't say has video for just the raw video layers. You want to make sure we have uh, added dot source on all of these. All right, and lastly, a very simple way to check if you have a camera layer or any special kind of layer is simply to check if one of the properties that make it special are there. So in this case, a camera has the zoom property. The only thing we really have to check, we can say comp.layer i. We're going to say, does the property zoom, uh, if comp.layer i.property zoom does not equal null, then we know it's a camera because the only layers that have zoom or depth of field or any of these are camera layers. If it doesn't have it, it's not one. So if zoom is not null, you definitely know you have a camera. So just to make sure we're doing all this right, we're going to uh, test it out real quick. So first, let's select some footage. All right, so I was doing some testing as to why this might not be working. And I think what we need to do is first check if the source is not null. So what I think what's happening is when it runs the script, the first thing it checks is this camera layer and it wants to check, okay, we're looking for footage. Is the duration of this source greater than zero? Well, there is no source for the camera. If you go in the project panel, there's no cameras, no nothing. So there's no source. Uh, we have to ignore it sort of. So anytime we want to check a layer source, we need to first double check that it's not null. Otherwise it's going to error. Um, when we're looking at the camera property down here, we're not referring to the source, so that's an exception. But we also need to say inside of our if statement, I think comp.layer i dot source does not equal null. And now let's go ahead and paste that below here as well. And we'll try this out. Select some footage. And now we're accurately selecting our footage. Great. And we'll try images. We select our image and we try camera. We get our camera. Now you can go through and do this for as many pieces of footage as you want and uh, select all the layers you need, no matter how complicated your projects are. And of course, you can go in and further customize that stuff as much as you want. And that's going to do it for this week's tutorial, guys. I hope you enjoyed. That's how to make a layer or item selector that helps you quickly select all of your layers or items in a very specific fashion. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button. Of course, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to be notified of new uploads coming out every Monday and Thursday. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you guys in the next one.